Hello, 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 and welcome once again to Movies That Pop. I'm the Colonel. Let's see what popped up in theaters this week. In 1978, the poster for the first live-action Superman movie made the promise, you'll believe a man can fly. Now, almost 40 years later, we have the long, long overdue first live-action Wonder Woman movie that carries with it a similar promise, even though it's not on the poster, you'll believe a woman could take on an entire army. But given the track record of the latest DC Comics film adaptations, you could also add to that, you'll believe that a female superhero could get young boys to cheer along with her. Or, you'll believe a skinny supermodel can believably play the legendary buff Amazon princess. Or, hey, you'll believe that a modern DC film doesn't suck. How about that? You'll believe that a DC film could have narrative focus, compelling relationships, thrilling action, and heroes that were, dare I say it, optimistic? Well, I, the Colonel, have finally seen Wonder Woman, and all I can say is, brother, believe it. Now, I'm gonna break down what I loved about Wonder Woman first, and I think that's got to start with the heroine herself, as played by Gal Gadot. The trait that she shares with my current favorite cinematic superhero to date, Captain America, is that she just has a clearly defined nobility to her. Don't get me wrong, I love as much as the next guy seeing heroes that are irreverent, brooding, damaged, egotistical, awkward, or overly quippy, and we've got plenty of those flawed characters already. They're interesting, but they're everywhere. So when Captain America and now Wonder Woman come along, they stand out because they inspire us. They have a very keen sense of right and wrong, and they always, always try to do what's right. And it's great to have a hero who's just purely, you know, heroic. And Wonder Woman certainly is that. Raised in isolation from the rest of the world, on an island whose name I won't even try to pronounce, which is completely devoid of men, the main thrust of the story is what happens when soldier Steve Trevor crash lands his plane there and brings with him tales of a war to end all wars. Now, being purely heroic as she is, Wonder Woman, or as she's known, Princess Diana, feels compelled to leave her homeland and venture into a world that will ultimately make very little sense to her. Diana's rude awakening is where a lot of the humor and the conflict in the story come from. She's got a lot to learn and to rebel against, not only with the societal sublimation of women, although there is plenty of that and it's handled note perfectly, never preachy, never man-hating, just perfectly balanced. But she's also got a lot to learn about mankind itself, mankind's capacity for cruelty, for destruction, and for their capacity for inhumanity to man. She feels in her heart that mankind is inherently good and is merely under the influence of Ares, the god of war, and that by merely killing Ares, the god of war, we'll all just snap out of it and be loving and good to each other as is in our general human nature. Like I said, she's got a lot to learn. And she's got even more to learn than you might think, because this story actually takes place around the end of the First World War, a time when women didn't even have the right to vote, making her strength and independence even more progressive and more inspiring. Not only is Wonder Woman beautiful, not only is she badass, and I wish I had the time to tell you more about the action scenes here, other than to say that they are beautifully executed, well visualized, and packed with cheer out loud iconography. Not only is she all of these things, but she's also challenging the status quo. She's changing hearts and minds. Hooray for girl power! And the most obvious sign of this is in the character of Steve Trevor, with Chris Pine really bringing everything he has to this part. Steve is a man of his time, no doubt, but he is a good and a capable hero. He's also a very well-written character, and so much more than a mere love interest for the hero. Now, he accepts her as an equal almost instantly. His journey isn't about accepting gender equality at all. That would be cheap and boring. Instead, his emotional journey is about accepting her worldview. That there's no such thing as a lost cause. That you should always try to save as many people as you can. And I tell you, there's a recurring line in this movie spoken to and about Wonder Woman. This world doesn't deserve you. And by the end, we've seen both Diana and Steve do truly brave, noble, and beautifully heroic acts in the name of what's right. And you can tell that Steve Trevor, at least, does deserve Wonder Woman. Her influence makes a decent man into a great one. And their relationship is, well, it's the best part of the movie for me. And I dare say it's the best romance that I've seen in a superhero movie since... Well, since I can't even remember when. There have been some good ones, and I'll flash them on the screen here, but the romance is always usually a superfluous subplot, or the loved one is simply a pawn to be rescued or to hide the hero's identity from. But here, in Wonder Woman, that relationship really is the whole damned movie, and it's very affecting. Look, this is really one of the good ones, guys. I fear that it's easy to get wrapped up in the hyperbole when we think about the fact that it's a female superhero, it's a female director, and it's a great leap forward for women in cinema. I mean, this movie passes the Bechdel test within the first few 
two minutes. And that's all great, and that's all great. So I should probably point out that it's not a perfect movie, but all of my concerns are really kind of minor gripes. Like, again, we have a pretty weak villain, a standard complaint for most superhero movies, and the action climax is a little too heavy on the current trend of two characters just throwing special effects lasers at each other. And am I the only one wondering why there was no Linda Carter cameo? I mean, Lou Ferrigno got one in The Incredible Hulk. Would've been nice. Just saying. However, after all that, I still award Wonder Woman an extra large bag of popcorn. It's fun, it's inspiring, it's thrilling, it's romantic, it's even, in some parts, very, very funny. Wonder Woman is a big, beautiful, well-rounded film that never goes off the rails or loses its focus, and by that definition alone, it's easily the best DC superhero movie since The Dark Knight. Believe it! That does it for this edition of Movies That Pop. Don't forget to follow me, the Colonel, on Twitter, at Movies That Pop. And click the icon right down there to visit our channel if you'd like to see more. And support us by clicking subscribe while you're there, and by clicking the thumbs up icon below. I'd like to hear your thoughts on Wonder Woman in the comments as well. Don't make me bust out my lasso of truth on you. In the meantime, thanks for watching. I'm the Colonel. And I'm a believer!